In the last video, I explained uh, how a wing works, and uh, and uh, in this video, I'm going to explain what one company did. Basically, they turned the whole car into a wing, and the way it worked was like that. Let me just draw the racing car first. That's the front. No way, man, it's too fat. That's the front wheel. That's better. Yeah, and that's the rear wheel. And at the front you had a wing, a small wing. And obviously you had the side plates. Just like that. And at the back you also had a wing. And the side plates. And let's put the driver here. There's the driver and cockpit. There you go. I should do it. A rollover bar. And here we go. Now, basically, uh, wings came at the end of the 60s. In 68, they started uh, to turn up, or, or end of 67, they started to turn up in uh, Formula One cars. And uh, after some obscene wings which went really high and stuff like that, uh, things stabilized in, in, in 70 and basically the cars had wings at the back, a small wing at the front and that's about it. And then a company called Lotus came up with an idea and basically what they did, they turned, they said why not have this section here also act as a wing and what they did they, 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 the, the lower, uh, the bottom profile of the car was not flat as in most cars, but was actually a wing profile. It went like that. And up. So basically when the car was was, was uh, racing, air would go through the bottom of the car and go up here. And basically the car as a whole would act as a wing. And that generated massive downforce. Not only, not only was downforce created here and here, but also here. The whole car was generating massive downforce. And that gave them an enormous advantage um, against their competitors. And that was that was that car was that, that thing emerged in 1977, and that was the Lotus 78. And they nearly won the championship, because, but they had a lot of uh, unreliability problems with the engines and stuff like that. But then they topped that in the, uh, the following year, in 1978, with the Lotus 79. And basically, that, uh, first of all, that Lotus 78 was basically a wing car. A wing car. Yeah, it just had a massive inverted wing. And that was generating the downforce. What they did with the Lotus 79, which was the next car, Lotus 79, that was in 1978, and they won that championship uh, with Mary Andretti, they created what they what was called what's termed a ground effects car. And what's the difference? Well, let me just scroll down a bit. With a with a wing car, a wing car. It's just that you just have the whole car is just one big inverted wing, just as like showed it up here, and it was generating downforce just like any wing. With that ground effects car, and there's the ground. With that, with that, let me roll down further, so we have some space. With a ground effects car. You had the following. You had the wing, and you had the ground. But the wing had to be a certain distance to the ground. That clearance had to be a certain, uh, you know, it would have to be certain, you know, to, to, to the millimeter. Because through that clearance, what happened, air came here, 
And then because that clearance was set to a certain uh, uh, distance, air accelerated through that clearance and out of here. So basically, uh, it wasn't just a wing, like in the wing car, but it was also using this proximity to the ground in order to accelerate the air further. So the air was going way faster here than in the, in the older wing car. And that gave uh, the ground effects car a bigger advantage than, than the normal wing car. You know, a normal wing car, uh, it didn't use that clearance to the ground at all, or maybe to, to a lesser extent than this one. But this one used the clearance very much so. And, and this air acceleration through this, what, what this generated was what was called the Venturi effect. Basically, when air, air is pretty loose here, but when it's forced into a tight channel, it accelerates. And this acceleration creates more downforce than the normal acceleration you have through that wing profile. And that's why ground effect cars were then all the norm from uh, 1978, when Lotus initiated, till 1982, all Formula 1 cars used ground effects. They basically use this Venturi effect at the bottom here, accelerating the air, which was pressing the whole car down. And the way these cars looked, I'm just going to try and get it in 3D. So, if I'm going to sketch the car, uh, there you go, there is the... That's where the driver sits. That's a cockpit. I'm just going to draw the driver as well. There you go. And I'm just going to, uh, and then you've got the engine here. There's the engine. And you've got the tires here. That's the rear tire. Front tire. And so on, front tire. And rear tire. And the way ground effects was produced, they had these side pods. And they extended to the back. And this side pod, that was where the wing was. That wing profile was going through the whole length of the side pod. Yeah. So you didn't see it from the outside. But if you look at the bottom of the car, you would see the wing profile. It would go, looking at it from the side, there's a side pod. And the bottom of the side pod had this wing profile going all the way up. All the way up. And this whole area was generating the downforce. Plus, of course, these cars had also a rear wing. But that rear wing wasn't was just basically stabilizing the massive downforce that uh, those side pods were producing and those cars also had a minuscule front wing and at some circuits like Monte Carlo slow circuits they didn't have this front wing at all because they didn't need it this wing was only needed at high speed circuits where um, it also uh, balanced the car with uh, because the, the 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 bulk of the downforce was produced here in these side pods and those cars were banned then in 83 in 83 onwards, all cars were mandated to have flat bottoms. So basically no more wing profile at the bottom, but your, uh, the bottom of the car had to be completely flat, thus not producing any more uh, downforce. The only, the only wing, prof uh, wing profiles were only allowed behind that rear uh, axle line and in, f in front of the front axis line. So basically after 83, your wind profiles were only allowed from